Hello, I'm Jamila Musayev, an etiquette expert, author of etiquette books and pre-recorded online courses. My books are available for international shipment worldwide directly on my website. I'll link it here as well in the description box below. And my pre-recorded courses, one is devoted to Western formal dining etiquette, everything you need to know from A to Z, as well as the art of entertaining at home. Both of these courses are pre-recorded, which means you can watch them at your own leisure time, at your own pace. And the links are available down below. Below. Bear in mind that both of these programs grant you a certificate of completion. Before we get started with today's video, I always want to ask you to make sure that you watch this video until the very end because at the end of the video, I share you the details of what I'm wearing for this video. So I have created or coined a new term which is OOTV, which is the outfit of the video, and I'll be sharing all the details of everything I'm wearing for today's look. So today's topic is something that I wanted to do a video on because of the lingering impressions I have afterwards and this uh, impression was really huge once I've left the event but it has been some time and I'm still thinking about the, the conclusions, the insights, um, the, um, the inspiration that I received from attending this event in London that was organized by London Arabia and the event was called Arab Women's Summit. It included all women from the Arab and Muslim world as well as guests from the UK and it was an amazing networking event and uh, we got to meet and greet and network with really bright, uh, very successful, very driven, um, very inspiring uh, women from all over the world and I had my own insights uh, throughout these three days and uh, my insights were the ones that really left a lot of imprint in my um, general worldview and coming back to Baku and then going back to work I have made a lot of new goals a lot of new projects for myself that I aspire to attain um, and I think it's very important to be le to learn how to get inspired from people's uh, success stories and from people's inspiring uh, life journeys um, so the first insight that I realized at going to this event uh, more like coming after from this event is that connections truly matter and you know i don't want to undermine the importance the huge importance of good education amazing skill set you know knowing multiple languages being you know being an expert in your field or or hard work and discipline but i also don't want to um, undervalue the importance of connections. I have seen uh, in my life journey as well as the ones that were shared there how connections are so important, who you are surrounded with starting from your you know early youth uh, going on to your adulthood you know in school and university and then at work and it's not just you know we are not all privileged to be going in a certain school where we have this really great connections but afterwards once we have graduated we can help ourselves to create that connections. And given in today's world, which is super interconnected, we have the liberty at our fingertips to, you know, message someone that is farther away from us, that can, you know, we can collaborate with, partnership with, we can um, open a dialogue about a work together or, or a project together. And so I realized going into this event, I always knew about that, but I also highlighted this for myself, how connections will really open a lot of doors for you. You know, you might sit at a table or you might be in a room where, you know, five of you are really great writers. All of you have the same, maybe credentials, have the same talent, but it's really that person who is best connected, who knows the right people, who knows the right maybe uh, agent or knows the right publishing house or knows the right people is going to get their books published is going to get their um, you know word out there uh, connections are something that we often o overlook when we are in college we think oh it's all about a good education and good gpa which is very important i still want to stress that out but never overlook the importance of making connections. If you can skip a class and go to a networking event to meet people, I would suggest you skip a class, go to a networking event, and then go back to library and study for the course um, on your own, because you might miss the chance of showing up to a place where you might meet very important people that can get you into your next interview opportunity, internship opportunity, job, whatever it might be. Don't undermine or um, don't, I guess, take the risk of missing out on things. Uh, so make sure that you show up so that you have the right connections. 
The second insight I received uh, in this event, um, especially from one particular speech by Baria Alamuddin, she's a award-winning journalist, um, she's this very fascinating woman, very inspiring, um, and you know, she shared an interesting story about how she was just a starting journalist in UK and she really strived to get an interview with Indira Gandhi, she was refused multiple times, she asked everyone she knew to, you know, to get her in touch with her and ask her her to allow Baria to take an interview and at the end of the day she was able to make it, she was able to receive that interview and she said walking, going to India I was just a regular journalist and coming back from India I was a star. So all the journalists in UK were greeting her at the airport, uh, really curious to ask her how she got that interview and what are some things that Indira told her. And it's interesting because in that storyline all I could hear was uh, being persistent first is never taking no for an answer if you really want something. But the second was how one situation or in particular one person can change the trajectory of your life, can change the course of your career, the course of your life. And you know, you've already probably a lot heard about, you know, someone having this mentor in their life, someone having this guardian in their life, someone having this, you know, um, I don't know, this uh, boss in their life that inspired them, that, that pushed them to further, um, you know, out of their comfort zone, that challenged them, uh, or that one person that opened, opened the opportunity or the door to a certain something that then later on brought them big success in their life. So I realized, how important it is to just have one person that can truly change your life. And going in with sometimes might not even know what the impact that person might have in our life. We might have this casual conversation, you know, once in a bus, on a plane, or somewhere out, you know, out in a party, and we don't know who this person is and how they can change our life. And then all of a sudden, this could be, you know, the person that you are trying to get into a company to work with or the, the best agent in the, in the city that is trying to recruit uh, someone in the same field that you're working. So it's really important to understand how important it is to know people and how important it is to uh, not overlook the importance of one person in your life. Building on what I already said about Barry Alamuddin's story with uh, an interview with Indira Gandhi, um, the third insight I received, not just from this story, but overall throughout the course of this event, is that never take a no for an answer. All these women that have achieved things, that have paid way uh, into fields that are usually male-dominated, be it science, cybersecurity, engineering, locomotive industry, all these women are the ones that really went for it and wouldn't take no for an answer. Even if someone in their society said, no, it's not appropriate for women to be doing so, or no, you can't get an interview with Indira Gandhi, she doesn't give interviews, or, um, or she didn't used to give interviews. So anything, when people say no to you, but if you're really passionate about it, just go for it. Don't take a no for an answer. Use all your resources far above and beyond to attain what you want to attain. And um, really, I think the difference between the ones that make it and the ones that don't is that one extra step that the ones that don't take a no for an answer take. So it's usually, you, if you were to visualize it, it's them coming pretty much in the same line, whereas the ones that stop where they're said no are just haven't taken that one or two extra steps that were required for them to attain their goal. And all these women are the ones that would never take no for an answer. They would just go and do whatever it takes to attain what they want. The fourth insight I received throughout the course of these discussions and dialogues and panel speakers is that you are probably, not probably, but for sure, your own best investment. There is no one out there that you can invest your time, energy, and resources in, maybe apart from your children, but really out there that could be the best product that you can, you know, uh, you can utilize, so to speak. You are your only best investment, uh, and I mean it in always, um, in education, in taking care of yourself, looking good, um, you know, taking good care of your health, taking good care of everything that involves, you know, your mental, emotional, spiritual, physical health. And um, really, when you show up to places and you, you see things, you realize that 
all these people that have um, attained things in life, that have become what we consider successful, are the ones that have made the biggest bet on themselves, that have made the biggest investment into themselves, um, and um, they have been their own best champions. Of course, I don't want to uh, not consider the fact that some of these people were born into uh, wealthy families, or maybe some of them had very supportive parents or have supportive partners. But at the end of the day, no matter how much support we get, it's what we make of ourselves is what we end up being. Um, the importance of relationships and influence are crucial, but what we make with those resources is eventually all up to us. The fifth insight I received, uh, because this was more of a networking event, a lot of these people were invited as um, you know, high-end uh, officials as well as super uh, VIP guests. These uh, people were the ones that we were first in meeting in person. Um, so the first impressions were so crucial. And I realized it over and over again that the importance of the first impressions is just something that we can never estimate enough. You get this one minute of introduction to a person, say uh, Theresa May or um, you know uh, an MP or someone or you know uh, Sheikh Hamza, whatever whoever it could be, you realize that it is really uh, the importance of this first minute of impression that you can uh, make on the person that you have been introduced to. Um, you have to be able to make the most out of it because you never get a second chance to make the first impression. And the first impressions are the ones that linger the most in our memories. Of course, when we have more interaction with a person, it can be slowly fading away. But for the time being, for the moment that we have been introduced to a person, up until our next connection, that's the thing that will be lasting in their memories. The sixth important insight that I received, and you know, I cannot, maybe because I'm biased, but maybe because I'm an etiquette expert and maybe because I pay attention to these things, but I pay attention to these things from a professional standpoint of view, and I think it has already been ingrained in my mind to look into these details. But I assure you, even if I were not looking into those things actively, subconsciously it gets registered in all our minds. Be you are an etiquette trainer or you have nothing to do with etiquette, you can really pinpoint, you can really differentiate between a person who has good manners and the one that doesn't. And etiquette is still very important. That it was my insight at this event that the first impressions are usually based on a lot of things that etiquette is teaching. That is how to carry yourself, how to dress, how to eat, how to stand, how to walk into a room, how to network. All of these things, the rules of behavior are outlined in etiquette. And when you know all these rules, when you know how to behave, when you know the rules of the game, so to speak, you play very easily. You are very comfortable in that field. And uh, you realize that the people that had uh, best exposure to good manners um, and have more knowledge in that are the ones that can make the best impressions as well as the ones that can make more connections. So etiquette is still very important. And the seventh insight I received uh, in this event, again, based on a lot of the speeches that panelists had and, uh, and uh, all these successful award-winning women had, is that they chose a path of, uh, of a newcomer or they chose a more um, unusual path, I would say, there were a little bit of troublemakers mixed with like non-conformist uh, like shakers of the society. These were all women that took on a role that is usually male dominated and they have proven once and over to not just um, other women but also particularly men that they can be better off and they can be equally competitive and they can be doing just exactly what they're doing and perhaps oftentimes even more with more diligence. And this made me realize how when you're too much comforting to societal expectations of your roles, uh, you're really never able to pave new ways to become pioneers some, in something. Um, if you know everyone told you, you know, you cannot fly, uh, it doesn't mean you can't. Uh, it just means you cannot fly in their mind. But in your own, if you have the capacity to to visualize it, then it's possible for you. Again, I don't mean like literally fly, but I mean. Uh, in terms of your work, your career, your aspirations and goals and dreams, 
um, I met some women that were in automotive industry. Um, this woman from Amman, and uh, she has been she has been in this industry for 20 or so years. Um, she took on the role um, from her father, who had no sons, so she was the woman that um, decided to take on the family business and carry on. And at the time when she was doing it, she was probably the pioneer in this industry. No one would do it. Um, but now she has paved way to new generations of women taking over that industry as well. Uh, so that was very inspiring to hear. And I realized that in order to be successful and in order to do something great, you have to be a little bit of a uh, troublemaker, not in a sense that you create troubles, but in a way that you don't conform to what society tells you is the only thing you can do. Uh, so a bit of a risky, adventurous nature is really good uh, when it comes to being um, better or, or, or outshining uh, what you were originally thinking was only possible in your mind. So really having the courage to take that extra step that will take you into a new chapter of your life. To sum up my impressions and my uh, insights from this event, the two most important takeaway lessons I have learned for myself after attending the Arab Women's Summit is that first of all is that to show up to show up in life, to show up to the events, networking, social gatherings, um, table, discussion table, um, show up to the room where people are having a conversation about something, never shying away from sitting at the table of discussions, from sitting at a table of negotiations, from attending a place where you think you are um, not comfortable enough or not confident enough to attend, um, just show up. Uh, you might meet that one person that can change the trajectory, trajectory of your life or you might connect with someone who can completely inspire you to start doing something that you, you thought was outrageous. And the second thing I would say is that you have to be able to learn to sell yourself like you're a luxury product. Uh, you have to learn to package yourself and to shelve yourself and to uh, show yourself, display yourself in a way that will show you in the best light. Uh, that will sell you the most uh, because at the end of the day we're here to offer something to someone and uh, we're looking for, for ways to show ourselves and understanding that you yourself are also a product you have to be able to sell yourself in the best possible light um, the difference between a bag in a Chanel shop and a bag in any other shop is the way that the bag is treated, the way it's handled, the way it's put on a shelf, the way it's packaged, the way it's presented to you. Um, so at the end of the day, if, if there are five people all with the same skill set and the same knowledge and the same credentials as you, the only difference that you are going to make and the impression that you are going to leave uh, in this kind of uh, social events or business events is that the way you carry yourself, the way you present yourself, the way you handle yourself uh, and the way eventually you package yourself. So I think there's a lot we can learn from the way uh, luxury products are being sold and we can learn to sell ourselves because at the end of the day we're our own best PR managers. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly really wanted to share my insights from this event because I came back feeling so inspired and really reconsidering a lot of things in my own life. And um, I have this uh, really weird state of wanting to do more and wanting to do some new projects that I uh, wouldn't have courage to do before. And having heard these stories of, of these women that strive and went for what they wanted has really inspired me to do so too and I hope that my insights will inspire you to start working on something that you thought was impossible or not postponing your life but truly living it and uh, trying to um, do a step every single day towards your dream life. Uh, do let me know down in the comment section below what are some of your video suggestions as well as what which of the insights did you find the most useful. So for today's video I have decided to wear this slip black a super body tight dress uh, that is from Zara. Uh, again I like this kind of dresses for any season really because you can easily add things on it, layer it and really change the whole look. It can work as a skirt, you can wear it as a dress alone or as a look that I'm having right now so with a blazer the blazer i'm wearing is from a brand called and other stories it's one of my favorite brands for everyday casual look wear as well as some really nice dresses as well and i have paired it with a bordeaux velvet Gianvito rossi pumps 
uh, their closed toe and I like how the color works well with the color that is on my blazer. It's not really brown. There are some lines of burgundy in it. So I love how it is reflected in my shoes. I love color combinating and that's the thing I do <laughs> with a lot of what I wear. Uh, so this is for today's look. Um, I can dress like this for say a, a business uh, cocktail party or, or I can dress like this for a meeting with a client uh, or even for a lecture. Uh, I think it looks quite decent and you can always uh, mix and match things and they're very versatile. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!